And today we're going to hear from Sean Tucker. I want to tell you about Sean. So he is an outstanding photographer. You can see here, this is just a small sample of his work. He's a photographer, filmmaker, a storyteller. He said, at heart, I'm a storyteller. For me, photography and filmmaking reaches its zenith when it's used to tell great stories. And Sean, it is wonderful to have you with us on Advancing Your Photography. Thank you. Thanks for having me. First of all, what is it that really drives you in terms of photography? In terms of genres, it's probably portraits first. Like that's my first love uh, is portrait photography. I know it's a love of good visuals. It's a love of uh, something pleasing and, and also, you know, something with a story buried in it or something I can access beyond the technically well shot photograph. Like I, at the beginning, I love the challenge. Just how do I... How do I, because I think anyone, especially if you do studio photography and things like uh, food photography or products or portraits where you're using strobes, especially, it's problem solving. It's constant problem solving. Totally. So, and then when you, st I, I think everyone sort of hits a phase in their journey where they kind of have most of the technical stuff in hand. Not that they know everything, but you yeah. know, you know everything to get the job done for all the things that you do, basically. You can get it done with your eyes closed. It's automatic. That you start to ask yourself a deeper question and you go, well, well, I know how to use this thing in my hand, but what do I point it at? And that then became, okay, now, and this is newer than I'd like to admit, really, it, it, it is to choose now what to point it at as the next journey. And that's why I wrote that on my website. It was more aspirational than the fact that it's real today, because I don't think my images do tell enough stories. I think I'm, I'm learning slowly as I go through street photography and portrait photography in particular, and the sort of mess of stuff that happens in between. Well, yeah. you're absolutely right. I mean, once you have figured out what your camera is supposed to do, then you look outward and your vision takes over and you, and you look for that story, that moment that is unique and something that you saw. What are some of the key points that you use every time you pick up a camera or even before you pick up? A camera it's, it's different for different sorts of photography that I do so if it's street photography it's 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 fairly simple and intuitive now so I'm I'm drawn to uh, interesting shadows and shapes so some of the stuff that I do on the street especially that I post on Instagram is quite abstract um, and I will I'll walk and I have to have good light for that sort of photography so those I know when the light is good it's coming up in the weather that those are the days I'm going to be out trying to get that sort of stuff I've got this is the little camera I use for for my street photography. What is it's that? A, it's a little it's a little Ricoh GR. Oh wow. Ricoh GR3. So it's basically just a little point and shoot. And I just like how low key it is because I'm I'm a yeah. I'm a coward on the street. I don't want to annoy anybody. I don't want to stress anyone out that I, you know I'm taking photographs and and that's why I like that 28 mil so I can shoot the space rather than individuals. Right. So that I am I am sort of photographing interesting light and shadow and if someone's there they've walked into the shot I i'm here waiting because yeah. i like i'm fishing so i like the space i like what's going on and if someone walks through and is in my photograph you know you can get upset with me and say did you take my photograph but most people just go i'm really sorry i walked into your photograph so right. there's more an apology than a confrontation so that all that sort of stuff is is helpful and i just walk you know i walk as far as i can as fast as I can, picking off things. And, and sometimes it's just to take a little visual note of something that's interesting, but the light's not quite right, then I can come back there on another day. So it's also this like cataloging idea of remembering spaces and what light's doing. Whereas portrait photography for me is totally different. That is, uh, you know, different cameras, it's lights, it's the rest of it. And it's, it has to be pre-visualized for me as much as possible. So I will often create a mood board for a project that I've got coming up. And I know exactly what I want to get. Whereas the street photography side is whatever I see is what I get and I'm leaving it to chance. The portrait stuff is I'm going to control, making sure I have the right subject, the right lights, the right, the right outfit, the right coloring, everything in the shot the way that I want it to be. So it's kind of the reverse. Speaking of portraits, tell us about these portraits behind you here. I actually did a video um, on these guys as well and, and sort of the making behind these portraits, also the, the mood board I collected for them as well. Um, they are three of my uh, mentors uh -huh. um, through the years. I, I grew up, uh, my dad left when I was quite young, uh, about four years old. And I think, you know, growing up as a, as a kid and as a teenager, you're always looking for those 
people who'd step in the gap somehow and father you in small ways, even though it's not their job. And these are three of the people who did that for me. So, and they they actually came. There's an interesting story with them because uh, I, I had. Um, if you go, it's probably on my website, and there's also a video on it where I went to Namibia and I took uh, portraits with the Himba tribe, um, oh, yeah. and I did that at a stage where uh, I was looking at beautiful work from Steve McCurry and Salgado and people who would go around the world and find beautiful, interesting people and stories and take those photographs. And I thought I need to try that and experience that and see if it's the way to go. And I took the photographs, and I wasn't. I wasn't unhappy with them, you know, they, they were fine. I came back and I, I, I decided to print them nice and big. In fact, um, I've got them on the wall this side. Oh, yeah. So that's, that's three oh, of them yeah. printed there. Yeah. Amazing. And um, I took the images to uh, Genesis Imaging here in London, who print um, a lot of the Magnum photographers here for exhibitions. And the head guy there, um, he, uh, the creative director there is a guy named Alex, and he said to me, when he was printing these images off, he said, these are really good. These are technically really good, but I don't care about them, which was, you know, like, oh, that's, that, that's rough. Um, yeah. But he, he was very kind about it. He said, it's, it's, not that, it's not that, you know, the photographs aren't well taken, and I'm not criticizing your photography at all. It's that I don't feel your connection with this at all. I feel like you, you traveled around the world. You took technically competent pictures of very interesting looking people, and that's it. There's no, there's no story here that connects to you. And I thought, wow, that's a good challenge. So that's where these came about. Oh, is yeah. The next trip I took was to go back to South Africa and to contact these three guys and say, can I just come? And it will take 10 minutes. I'd just like to shoot an incredibly simple portrait, just black background, one light, and, and see what, what this does for me. And I, I sort of documented that trip a little bit as well, that experience. And they feel totally different to me. Yeah. They, they feel like even though – the people in them aren't as, you know, startling and stunning in terms of, you know, their appearance. And the, the photographs are much more simply lit and even edited. They, they feel like stronger work. And I think some of that might be because of my connection to them. So that's why mm -hmm. portrait wise for me, and I've got a couple of portrait projects lined up now, uh, which are connected to my story deliberately. So even, even if just tangentially, because I feel that makes stronger work, at least in my case. What do you think the difference was? I mean, obviously you knew, you know these these three guys behind you, but was there was there something more like philosophical within you that made a big difference in terms of having that connection? I don't know. It's it's one of those things that's hard to define, isn't it? But, but sometimes I think when you do look at an image, especially a portrait, in some ways, um, you can feel another layer to it because of, and, and maybe you can't figure out why. And, and again, it's one, it's one of those things that's very difficult to talk about because it's not quantifiable. So you can't teach people how to do this, um, I don't think. Um, I think you, the, the most you can do is, is for any portrait you shoot to try and get an honest moment, a chink in the armor with whoever you're shooting. Yeah. It's to get that unguarded moment. That, 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 because everyone who sits down for a portrait, and, and especially models and actors, it's very hard to get an honest portrait of them because they're so practiced at giving you exactly what they want to give you and what they want you to see. And to direct them away from that to something more honest or open is, is very, very hard. It's often easier to get an honest moment with someone who, who isn't used to being photographed and is unprepared for that. Right. So it, it's, it's conversation and it's, it's drawing somebody out and waiting for that moment where they drop their guard slightly. And that could be in a gesture or an expression and it could be something that you don't know why. And, and I found that the response to that often is that whoever's having their photograph taken, that photograph often makes them feel uncomfortable when they first see it, 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 it because, because it is revealing in some way that they can't define either. And they're like, I'm not sure I like that one. And I have to try and talk them into taking that point usually. And, and my challenge to them is I know you might not like this, but I think this is more you. Go show this to your friends and family and see what they say about it and believe them if they tell you. This is more you. And if I can talk them into taking that one, those are the ones they'll thank me in a year's time for, but not on the day because it felt a little bit more revealing. Let's dive into, this is a question that just popped up. I'm going to ask you, do you believe that there's a link between one's faith and one's photographic styling? Yes, but I, th I think it's more complicated than that. I think it's, uh, I think your, your faith or even lack of faith or, 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 or 
or your philosophy about how you see the it, it will shape how you see the world all that stuff um, and what you believe about different things and what you believe about people in particular and I think that will lead you to particular subjects rather than others and it might even lead you to tell stories from different angles than it would so I mean something as deep as as, as and again, I'm careful with the word faith because I understand that you know people don't like that and don't think of themselves as religious at all. You you, you will have a worldview, and I think uh, that's the important thing is is um, just taking that into account and owning it as well. If you've come to that over the course of your life and believe this is the way life, the universe, and everything works, to say, well, I I now want to express this in the work that I do. I want my voice to come out, and I want to show you the way that I see things. And holding it loosely in case you're wrong and adapting the whole time and growing and all that good stuff. But yeah, I think, I think yeah, absolutely. I, and, if, and if it doesn't, I think you're not digging deep enough. I, I think it should. I think the way that you see the world should come out in the stuff that you make. Yeah. You know, maybe philosophy is a, an easier way to put it because mm. I, yeah. I, I find the more I photograph, the more I'm also in touch with my own philosophy. Like, what, what is it? Like you were saying, you know, we were talking about this before. It's like being true to your own voice. It's, it's like Salgado with his workers series. You yes. Know? That's what he saw and that's what he cared about. So he went and he took photos and he showed us that because that's, that's important to him and should be important to us. And he didn't even, he wasn't heavy handed with it. He wasn't preachy with it. He just showed us. And yes. I think that's, that's masterful. If you, can, if you can ride that line, I think it's really... That's, that's the gold standard for me, yeah. Sean, this has been fantastic. One last point. Is there, is there a tip that you'd like to leave our audience with that you feel like could be of uh, particular importance for them in elevating or advancing their photography to the next level? Keep going and be kind to yourself. And I think, I think to focus on the images that you're making and not the camera in your hand as much as you possibly can. We, we all get kind of stuck in that early gear phase where we think that if we spend a lot of money or put cameras on credit cards we can't afford, it's going to take better photos for us. But taking your time to use the camera you already have and teach yourself how to frame well, how to expose well, all that kind of stuff or how to tell a visual story well, you can do that with a phone. And I, and I mean that, like uh, my Instagram, for the first half of my Instagram, it's all on my phone. And it, it's enough to teach yourself. If you can afford that camera, get that camera, but, but then stop thinking about cameras and start thinking about the images. Because the quicker you can get to that stage where you remind yourself that you know, you've, you've learned enough technical stuff, it's now time to work out what to point this at, that's when photography, for me, really started to get exciting. Sean, thanks again for joining us on Advancing Your Photography to give us an inside look into your world. Really appreciate it. I want to mention a couple of things. So you guys can help build this channel by telling your friends, bringing them along, subscribing if you haven't done that yet, enable the bell so you get uh, notified every time we have a new video, like, share, leave your comments on the actual video. Thank you once again for joining us. And we'll see you on the next show. But remember to get out and capture your own images of life.